This video covers the general operation and maintenance for your new equipment. Every operator should watch this video before using the machine. Provided with your machine was an operator's manual. If you have not read this document, please pause this video and do so before continuing. This video provides information that is general and not tailored for your specific cleaning application. It does not take into consideration the health and safety risks specific to your application. Due to the many and various cleaning applications, the manufacturer, importer, distributor or seller of this equipment is not responsible for its performance. So, let's get into it. Hello, I'm Dave from Alpha Clean. My goal today is to make your job as easy as possible. What we have here today is the Columbus floor scrubber. Model is 55 BM40. So this machine is a 50 centimetre scrubbing path. BM stands for it's battery operated and motor driven. So this machine has got traction drive and it's a 40 litre tank capacity. So we've got two tanks on it, obviously. We've got a 40 litre clean water solution tank and then we've got a, a 40 litre waste tank. So on the top of the machine, we've got our waste tank. This is where our, all our waste water goes. As we lift this up, we've got full access to our batteries. Now we run gel batteries in this machine, so there's no acid. They're a maintenance free battery. So, um, so there's really no reason for you to access in here except for to check battery terminals. Um, keep an eye on our vac motor, which we need to just sort of keep an eye on and make sure we don't get any moisture in the vac motor. Um, but this here is what gives us access to our battery compartment. So this machine comes with a built-in charger, so it's built into the machine. We've got our cable here, which we can unwind off the machine. It just needs to be plugged into a, a 10 amp power socket, so just a standard plug. So if we plug that machine in, on the life of these batteries, we work on around the three to four hour run time, and then we work on a good eight hour charge time. Um, sometimes it will need more than eight hours, so we can charge it up overnight. It's a trickle feed charge and the charger will turn itself off once it's fully charged. Got a series of lights here which will tell us how we're going as far as our, our charging. So if you have a look at our far left light here, if it comes up red that means that there's a fault. So you need to unplug it and re-plug it in to take away the fault. If it's still there, please contact Alpha Clean. If not, your lights will go from orange through to a green light which tells you it's fully charged. So with your clean water, this here will tell you how much water we have in the tank. And also if you want to empty your clean water, it's a matter of emptying it out of this hose. So to put the clean water in the machine is a matter of putting it into the front section here, either by a hose or a bucket. And the same as any chemical that you want to use with the machine would go straight into the front section here. Any advice on chemicals, don't hesitate to contact Alpha Clean. Please note, like any floor scrubber, we recommend that you don't have a chemical that foams too much because this can create issues, especially for the suction motor. So on the vac motor, what we have is as the water comes up, we've got a ball float. So the water will come up and pick up the, pick up the ball to block off your suction. But as we know, foam is a lot lighter than water. So our water level may be down quite low. Our foam will come up, will not pick the ball up and could end up into your vac motor. So please note if your vac motor it does fail due to moisture, this would not be covered under warranty. So also in here we've got a, a, a filter for your vac motor. Uh, this needs to be checked after every use. Uh, you need to pull this out, clean it, it can be cleaned under a tap, rinsed out. Uh, we recommend then maybe keep it aside overnight before putting it back in. Make sure it's fully dry before we put it back into the machine. So if, if for any reason this has got a bit moist and we, we feel we've got a little bit of moisture in there, one thing we do recommend is then just turn our vac motor on, which I'll show you shortly, and let the vac motor run for about 30 seconds without any filter in here, and that way it'll burn out any moisture that may have got into your vac motor. Because this machine works on a vacuum system, so we want to make sure we have the, the seal on our top tank as clean at all times. Because uh, please note, if this, if this tank is not sealing properly, you will lose suction. So just make sure that when you clean your tank out, which we recommend hosing the tank out after each use, we just make sure this seal is clean and not damaged. So to empty our waste tank, this is our waste drain hose. Just to be removed, we can easily kink the hose, remove the, um, the cap, and then release the water. Please note that when you put it back, we make sure this cap is sealed. 
once again, if that cap is not sealed, it will um, reduce the, the vacuum and the suction you have on the machine. So what we have here is our, our suction hose. So obviously it can be easily removed from the machine. This hose over time can block up. You can always get something caught in there, which is obviously going to restrict the water um, from coming up into the machine. So this is something you want to keep an eye on. You can easily remove it, run a hose through it, clean it out and keep, yeah, keep this clean at all times. So the squeegee on the machine is the next point we want to discuss. Now this is very important in view of giving you a very dry floor. Um, the Columbus are very well known for how dry they leave the floor. It's got a very heavy duty squeegee assembly. So this can be easily removed by removing the hose. We've got two levers here which can be easily unscrewed and the whole assembly can then come off. Now what will happen is as you, the machine gets used, this edge on the side here will round off and then obviously start to leave some water behind. This, as you can see, has got a series of wing nuts. These can be easily removed. We can end for end it and wear the other edge. Then we can flip the squeegee upside down and, and use the other side. So you can get quite a good life out of these set of squeegee blades. Please note we do have a few different types of squeegee blades. So if for some reason they've worn out a bit too quick, or feel free to contact Alpha Clean to discuss other options we do have. We also recommend keeping it actually clean, so you want to try and pull it off regularly. You will get a build up of rubbish, you know, bits of fluff and hair that will get caught up in here, which needs to be inspected and cleaned after each use. So what you'll notice is we've got all on gated holes here where the squeegee assembly is mounted. There is a reason for that. That is if, if the squeegee does get caught on something, because this is a traction drive machine, it won't damage, it won't twist anything on the machine. It'll matter of just pull off the squeegee. You'll have to refit it. To raise and lower your squeegee assembly is just on this handle here. So very simple, just a manual operation. It's either down when you're using the suction or you can lift it up. To raise and lower your brush deck is on this foot pedal here. So this is done by your foot operation. Very simple, it's a matter of twisting it sideways. Drops your brush deck and then to push it down, it raises the brush deck. So with this machine, we have plenty of options as far as brushes go. We've got a series of different grey brushes and then we also have the pad holder, which you can run a, a whole range of different, different pads. So feel free to contact us in view of us recommending what would be best suitable for your application. Now to remove your brush, we have a brush skirt here, which is to help restrict the water from flicking out too far from the machine. So that can be easily pushed aside. To remove the brush, we simply turn it as, as though it's in an, an anti-clockwise arrangement. Just turn it round, the brush will drop off. So what you'll notice, we've got the shape of a spigot here, which is our drive system underneath the machine. So it's a matter of lining that up with it and then twisting it back on the machine. Uh, very, very simple. One thing I'd recommend is make sure that when you're doing it, you hold the brush in the middle, not to one end, because if you don't hold it flat, you will struggle to get it on. It's a matter of grabbing it each side. So we slide it under the machine, grab it each side, and then just twist that on. We do recommend you pull the brush or pad holder off after each use to clean it because you never know what may be caught into it. There could be a, um, some staples or a, a nail or something that could damage the floor. So we do recommend pull it off after each use and clean it. So with the pad, obviously this can be cleaned, hosed off. Once it wears a bit, you can turn it over. To remove it, we've got a, a center clip here. Now there are a few different style clips. So just to be aware of that, there is one option where you just need to unwind it. It's just like a, a screw clip. This one here has got a different type of clip arrangement where we pull those pins in and then the, the clip pops off. And then to re-put this on, it's a matter of just pushing it on and it'll clip into position, just like that. So please note there are a few different types. You may end up getting the one that's a twist clip. So for ease of operation, we can adjust the handle by unscrewing these side knobs. We can then adjust it to whatever height is suitable for the operator. To go through the running of the machine, we've got our ignition switch here, so we can turn that, that's off and then on. When it's on, we will have the little orange light. Now, one thing I'll make clear is we do have a drive switch here. Now, please note that this drive switch needs to be on, otherwise the machine won't drive. Uh, the main reason this switch will be turned off 
is that if you have to freewheel the machine to push it, it'll make it easier to push. Mm. While we're here, we've got our dial for our water control, so we can adjust how much water we put onto the floor. It's just a manual water dial. Then we've got our circuit breakers here. So for any reason the machine stops, whether it be the brush head stops or the drive, that's the first place we want you to check, is that the circuit breaker hasn't popped out. You can just simply reset that by pushing it back in. The other controls on the machine, we've got our battery indicator light at the top here. So as you'll notice, it's on green. It'll then go orange and then red. There's only three lights. Please note that orange is not a halfway point. Orange is like your fuel light in your car. So when the orange light comes on, it means finish what you're doing and get it back on to charge. So we've got our vacuum motor on this switch here. So by hitting this on, it'll turn your vacuum motor on. This switch here then turns your brush head on. Now when this brush switch is on, the brush won't activate then until you drive the machine. So until we go to move forward. Then when we let go of the drive lever, the, the, the brush head then will stop spinning. So if you walk away to move a wet sign or walk away to move something, the brush won't continue to spin on the floor. Then what we have here is a speed control dial. So this here can control the actual speed. That's the driving speed of the machine. Although we've got full control on the paddle, so that's very variable speed, that's reverse and then forward, we can also adjust the speed control. So while you're scrubbing, you can adjust this at a, at a, at a speed that suits your application and it means you can have a consistent speed at all times. You're not trying to feather the speed with the um, controller. So what you'll notice on this machine is we have what we call bump rollers. So we've got the bump rollers on the front of the body, on the brush deck, and as well as on our squeegee. That is that if any contact the machine may have coming up against a wall or your skirting boards, your skirting boards and wall will, will be protected by the um, bump rollers. The other service point on this machine is our water filter. Now that's the filter that filters all your clean water. So it can be easily unscrewed and removed. So we've just got a little um, gauze filter here. Now this here can be just rinsed out under a tap, cleaned and then put back into position. So as we screw this back on, there is a little O-ring, a seal on the actual device that the uh, filter screws on. It just make sure that is in position, otherwise it will continue to leak water. So this is a service item that would be serviced when we service the machine. However, if you do notice you're not getting enough water on the floor, this is somewhere that you can check. As you'll notice, our brush head is slightly off-center. On the right-hand side, we've just got the one roller. So it's off-center so that it allows you to get right up close to the wall. As you can see, the 55BM40 Columbus Scrubber is a very easy machine to operate and maintain. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Alpha Clean. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and we hope this video has been helpful. Remember that regular maintenance of your machine is recommended to optimize its life cycle.